Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barry Colfer, and I'm the Director of Research at the IIEA, and I'm really pleased to welcome you to this afternoon's webinar. We're really delighted to be joined today by Zacharias da Costa, Executive Secretary of the Community of Portuguese Language Countries, who's been generous enough to take his time out of his schedule to speak to us about this important organization. Executive Secretary da Costa will speak to us for about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll go to Q&A with our audience. You'll be able to join the discussion as ever using the Q&A function on Zoom, which you should see on your screens. Please feel free to send your questions in throughout the session as they occur to you, and we'll come to as many questions as we can once Executive Secretary da Costa has finished his presentation. A reminder that today's presentation and Q&A are both on the record. Please feel free as ever to join the discussion on Twitter using the handle at IIEA. Zacharias de Costa, an East Timorese diplomat and politician, was elected Executive Secretary for, for the biennium of 2021 to 2023 by the 13th CPLP Conference of Heads of State and Government held in Luanda, Angola on July 17th, 2021. He is the first East Timorese person to hold this office. Prior to this, Mr. De Costa served as the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Democratic Republic of, T of Timor Leste, amongst much else. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you, either in Ireland uh, or in Portugal or elsewhere in the world. And of course, uh, uh, let me start by uh, thanking uh, the Director General, David O'Sullivan, the team of uh, IIEA in Ireland uh, uh, for inviting me to participate in this uh, webinar promoted by Institute of International European Affairs. I'd also like to thank uh, Ambassador Ralph Victory, the permanent representative of the Republic of Ireland to the CPLP and Ambassador to Portugal, whose work in Lisbon has been fundamental to strengthen the existing cooperation between the CPLP and Ireland. It is truly a great honor to have the opportunity to present the CPLP to such an illustrious and diverse audience. Uh, allow me to begin by introducing some ideas which I believe best characterize our community of Portuguese uh, speaking countries. Um, I would start by saying that uh, the CPLP uh, is a natural and desirable result of a centuries old uh, historical bond that links its member state in a very profound way. At uh, the roots of, it, of this deep connection it's a common language, uh, Portuguese, an expanding language which permanently renews and updates the, the, this historical bond. <clears throat> this common language does not only unite our member states, it goes much further uniting our citizens, including the numerous diasporas that go far beyond the borders of our countries, as is the case, by the, by the way, right there in Ireland. In this sense, uh, the language we share is our common border, which uh, like the seas, like the ocean, brings uh, together our countries, which are geographically dispersed over four continents. It is only natural that uh, united by this historical bond and by the language, uh, they choose to use an official language. These nine countries, uh, namely Angola, Brazil, Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Equatorial Guinea, Mozambique, Portugal, San Tomé, Príncipe, and Timor-Leste would come together to defend their shared interests and common objectives. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our international organization is therefore in itself a space for multilateral consultation, which project our member states as a cohesive group, as a united political space, or as, uh, if we prefer, as a geolinguistic space. Um, the second aspect that I would like to highlight is that although it is the result of an historical bond, the CPLP is not the past, does not belong to the past, it is the future. The Lisbon Summit in 1996 gave this historic link a new shape in a new time. The creation of the CPLP overcame old negative historical paradigms and open a path towards the future based on a model, model of sovereign equality of its members, which converge around values such as the uh, primacy of peace, democracy, and rule of law. 
the CPLP came to anchor the enormous potential for cooperation between Portuguese speaking countries in a functional structure equipped with bodies, norms, mechanisms, and human financial and material resources with the aim of contributing to the development in those that are its three pillars of action, political diplomatic consultation, cooperation in all fields, and the promotion and expansion of Portuguese language. The third idea I would like to highlight is that over the past 26 years, the CPLP has been expanding and simultaneously deepening its action. Uh, let's look at the enlargement first. We immediately extended our organization to new members. First, we historically delayed but long awaited arrival of uh, Timor Leste, my country, the Portuguese speaking family, which happened uh, in, uh, 20, in 2002, immediately after the restoration of independence, after the transitional administration of the United Nations. And then later at the Dili summit in 2014, with the accession of Equatorial Guinea, a country that had the status of associated observer since 2006. On the other hand, we have also expanded our action. We extended to new sectors of cooperation that were not initially foreseen. For example, to name just a few, defense, food security, uh, energy, electronic governance, and now more recently, economic cooperation. We have also expanded our partnerships, creating an extensive network of collaboration with international, regional, and uh, UN agencies. We expanded the thematic networks for sharing knowledge and good practices, which currently number more than 50, covering the most diverse areas of cooperation in which uh, we work. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned, our organization has also deepened its action. And I would like to highlight two main aspects. We have deepened our organizational structure, which we consolidated through different statutory provisions. We integrated the International Institute of uh, Portuguese Language, whose creation predates the CPLP itself, integrated the interparliamentary cooperation through the parliamentary assembly. We formalized the sectoral ministerial meetings as bodies and created a meeting of cooperation uh, focal points where the directors responsible for development cooperation sit. Um, we have deepened our action in sector in which we already worked and created more efficient instruments such as sectoral strategic plans, operationalized short-term action plans and align such plans with the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals. On the other hand, we have been increasingly promoting political diplomatic consultation, either in mobilizing support for the candidacy of member states or outstanding, outstanding personalities for international positions within the framework of other organizations, such as the United Nations. Um, either in aligning position, positions on matters on the international agenda, as the case, uh, uh, with the Global Conference on Com Combating Child uh, Labor, the World Water Forum, and more recently with the International Coalition for Promotion of Sustainable Territorial Food Systems, which I will be referring to later. We monitor crisis situation in the internal context of the member states and promote electoral observation missions. Um, as for the Portuguese language, let me quickly also go through it, saying that the CPLP has contributed in a very significant way to the promotion of the Portuguese language, to the reinforcement of the weight of the Portuguese language in the world. Ultimately, uh, the CPLP has increased the global uh, outreach of the Portuguese language. This means that uh, the interest in Portuguese no longer steams stems on the uh, sole fact that it's a language of heritage, but rather from its ability to assert itself, itself as a foreign language, uh, a language of business, diplomacy, literature, and creative industries, of tourism, of diasporas. And uh, of course, it is now the language of scientific, scientific knowledge, of academic mobility, language of new technologies, digital space, and social networks, 
aspects that uh, give it a measurable economic value with great potential for growth. I would like to talk now about the challenges of the future. As I said before, the CPLP is now 26 years old. A quarter of a century makes the CPLP a young organization still, especially when compared to similar organizations, such as, as the Commonwealth founded in 1949 or the OIF founded in 1970. Even so, and thanks to the work it carried out and the performance of its member states, the CPLP gained notoriety on the international scene as the, as the number of associated observers so clearly demonstrates. Uh, speaking about associate observers, uh, let me just uh, mention that currently the number uh, rises to 32, of which 28 countries and four international organizations um, at the 2014 and 2016 summits in the CPLP welcome eight new observers, um, and most recently in 2021 at the Luanda Summit, as has been also mentioned, we welcome 13 new partners, including Ireland, along with countries like the United States of America, Canada, India, among uh, many others. This increase demonstrates that the CPLP has been projecting itself as a relevant actor in foreign policy and has been perceived as a platform for diplomatic consultation. As, the, as a platform for business or cultural and linguistic uh, cooperation as well. Uh, now of the immediate challenges that I identi identify lies precisely in the way we can take greater advantage of this privileged relationship that we have established with uh, these 32 associated observers and uh, with future candidates. How can associate observers contribute to the CPLP and vice versa? And how can we strengthen our cooperation with these partners? It is for this purpose that we are reviewing the regulation regarding its observer status. That is, we intend to establish a cooperation roadmap based on concrete actions on matters of common interest, registered and aligned with the organization's action strategy. We are also currently receiving a lot of expression of interest. Uh, I just mentioned in this case two, Australia and uh, Rwanda, which has already been formalized, uh, but certainly we are uh, not considering the applications until the completion of uh, the review of the regulation, the review, the regulation review process, which I have mentioned before, uh, which we hope will occur until the next summit in July 23 in San Tomé y Príncipe. Let me also briefly mention also an economic cooperation objective. Uh, another challenge faced by the CPLP in the short term concern, concerns the promotion of a facilitated framework for economic and business cooperation, namely through the internationalization of companies, the mutual protection of investments and the increase in trade. And after the Luanda summit, uh, where uh, a resolution on the creation of a new general economic cooperation objective was uh, approved. Um, and uh, this resolution contemplates the possibility of this sector becoming part of the organization's statutes. Um, I should say that we have advanced in concrete initiatives. Um, a joint, first joint tripartite meeting of the Ministers of Economy, Trade and Commerce. Um, at this, uh, this first joint meeting, we approved the strategic agenda for the consolidation of economic cooperation. And um, this includes uh, seven priority axes with emphasis on trade promotion, invest, investment promotion, institutional and business training, improving financial mechanisms, among others. At the same time, the Forum for Foreign Trade and Investment Promotion Agencies of the CPLP was created with the aim of promoting the exchange of good practices, training initiatives, and institutional capacity building, as well as joint actions in matters such as the internationalization of companies, the increase in trade and, invest and investment in the strategic sectors. 
At the heart of the economic cooperation objective, it is, oh, is the need to respond to the challenges of the post-COVID economic recovery and uh, to the new demands of the global market. Economic cooperation in the CPLP will be more fruitful the more it is extended. It should include the public authorities and institutions of the member states and the action of partners from the private sector and civil society, including the associated observers and the consultative, consultative observers of the CPLP. <clears throat> In the first phase of this uh, strategic agenda, it advocates above all actions aimed at consolidating intra-CPLP economic cooperation, uh, namely with the view of institutional capacity building, harmonization of practices and the creation or revitalization of the network of public institutions with responsibilities at the foreign trade and investment, financing, industry property, quality and competition. Uh, let me also briefly mention another important chapter, uh, which is the mobility agreement. Another challenge um, uh, that uh, uh, is presented to us, and I'd like to mention this today, is naturally to, is to bring the CPLP more closer to the citizens uh, it represents. There are countless and multiple ties that unite our citizens across the geographic space of the Portuguese language. So the mobility of people is a corollary of these ties and a strong factor of cohesion, which contributes to the sense of belonging to a space that we want to be increasingly shared and experienced by all. Uh, again, last year in the, at the Luanda summit, uh, member states have signed a mobility agreement within the CPLP. Um, the agreement has uh, since uh, been ratified by all member states with remarkable speed. Uh, this mobility agreement is a framework agreement which shall now be complemented with additional partnership, partnerships among member states. In other words, member states are now free to choose which modalities they will apply, for example, short stay within CPLP, temporary stay, residence visa, visa exemption, etc. And they are also free to define who will be the beneficiaries covered, for example, state agents, teachers, students, entrepreneurs, cultural agents, among others. On the other hand, uh, I would also like to emphasize that the agreement recognizes and safeguards international commitments in terms of mobility that the CPLP, CPLP member states have assumed within the framework of their respective uh, regional integrations. And I should also mention that uh, being in four continents, we belong to uh, different uh, regional spaces of uh, uh, integration, the, namely uh, CDAO, SEAC, SADEC, uh, ASEAN, of course, not to mention the um, European Union and, uh, and the Mercosur as well. Uh, I would also like to, to mention uh, before I conclude uh, on the promotion of Portuguese language uh, that uh, we have many challenges regarding our future action in promoting the Portuguese language. We need to strengthen the means for its promotion and uh, expansion, both at the inter-CPLP and external levels. And we count on the important contribution of the associate associated observers in, in, the, in this regard. Um, but also important to say that internally UN projections point to a doubling of Portuguese speakers by the end of this century, mainly thanks to the demographic growth in Angola and Mozambique. And uh, by the end of this century, an estimated of 500 million people uh, will be speaking Portuguese. And this is also in economic terms, uh, huge market to explore. But as I said, this growth will only have a real impact if the widespread use of Portuguese by the population and uh, of course by the diaspora uh, elsewhere is uh, truly um, ensured. Um, externally, UNESCO's declaration of 5th of May as the World Portuguese Language Day uh, represents also a recognition of the growing importance of uh, the Portuguese language 
which is currently the most uh, widely spoken language in the Southern Hemisphere, thanks to Brazil. It is among the fourth or the fifth most spoken in the world, and it is uh, one of the fastest growing on the internet. Uh, also, it is an official work and or working language in 32 international um, organizations. Um, we are interested in marking this date, uh, the 5th of May, in partnership with uh, associate observers through joint initiatives, which will allow the expansion, the dissemination of the Portuguese language, the culture of CPLP countries, and reach uh, not only the citizens of the associated countries, but also the Portuguese speaking diasporas residing uh, everywhere. And I know that uh, according to the last census, uh, uh, there are more than 20,000 Portuguese speaking uh, in, in Ireland, but I'm sure that today there is more than this uh, number uh, since uh, the mobility within the, within the EU is also uh, one of the main uh, issues. Uh, I think I'm almost at the end and let me conclude, or I should say I cannot conclude this presentation without uh, first underlying the importance of Ireland in the CPLP and its uh, status of, uh, or as associated observer of the CPLP. Uh, in addition to the Portuguese uh, speakers living uh, in Ireland, uh, the fundamental principles and values uh, shared with the member states of the CPLP and with this organization are namely freedom, democracy, and human rights serve and will serve as a foundation in the present and future, future journey of realization of the objectives of uh, the CPLP, the community of the Portuguese speaking countries. Uh, there is a uh, great potential for actions to be developed on this uh, journey. Um, certainly the areas which uh, we are currently uh, working together with Ireland since um, uh, Ireland has acceded to, to the status of associated observer uh, last year. Um, uh, I think in such a short term period since uh, Ireland got this uh, status, we have already uh, been working hard with Ambassador uh, here in Lisbon uh, to, and we, I think we progress in some uh, uh, areas uh, uh, where we are going to uh, further, we're going to uh, reinforce this partnership. Uh, so we have looked at the uh, concrete areas of uh, joint uh, partnership, and I think that uh, soon we would be able to uh, agree on uh, one or two areas which would uh, kickstart our work on this. Um, uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ambassador, I do thank you for your kind attention, and uh, I appreciate the invitation uh, to be a panelist in this uh, session. And uh, I'm now looking forward to any questions you may have. I thank you very much.